Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video talking about uh, something in the news that maybe some people were not aware of. Uh, it is actually in the section of the news that talks about this banner. This is the Autumn Limited Legends Limited Guaranteed Summon. This is, I guess, sort of like a uh, continuation of the, what is it, like the, I forget the name of what they use, like, it was like the, the Lunar Rising banner or something, the, the Moon Viewing banner, I think is what it was called or something, I don't remember. It was, uh, it wasn't that long ago, it was for the Lunar New Year, I think. Uh, it was the first time they brought back the fusing Blue Gogeta and Super Vegito from the 6th anniversary. It was a banner featuring them on it. It was a pretty bad banner. I didn't really recommend people summon on that. Uh, and this is a very similar situation with this Autumn Limited banner. This is the first time they are bringing back Ultimate Gohan. Uh, this is something that they've gotten a lot more comfortable with doing, and I, I'm not a huge fan of this. It's just, it's very... It just, it just doesn't feel good. It just it's, it feels very scummy of them to do something like this. The first time they're bringing back Ultimate Gohan, it is very obvious. Ultimate Gohan was designed, or I guess I should say the other way around, Gotenks was designed really to work very well with Ultimate Gohan. And instead of putting Ultimate Gohan on the Gotenks banner, although I do think the Gotenks banner is actually very good by itself already, um, but instead of putting Ultimate Gohan on that Gotenks banner, they relegated this Gohan to being brought back for the first time on his own separate banner, which uh, if we scroll down and take a look at some of the characters on here, this is certainly not what I would call a banner worth summoning on. Uh, this is a banner that uh, I believe it is, was it 3000 CC or something? I, did they explain how this works? Let me see something here. I don't know if they even explained this in here. Um, I think it's like, I could, I could pull up my game real quick and just let you guys know, but this is, this is a banner. You can only do this five times. So this says five times only on the screen there. And, uh, you get a 30 times summon. Yeah. So it is, it is 3000 CC because it's, it's, a, it's a, it's basically three multis combined into one. So it's 30 characters per multi summon. It costs 3000 CC per multi summon. And you get one legends limited guaranteed at the end of the 30 character summon. But it's like you take a look at the characters that are actually listed on here. Not very impressive. I mean, Ultimate Gohan obviously is by far and away the best character on here. Other than him, I mean, you got Kid Buu, who's just good because he's, his Zenkai was insane. Still is insane. Um, but like, who else are you going to pull? Like, like Dragon Fist, I would say is okay. Green Trunks has been dead for years. Blue Beast, I mean, it, obviously he's been power crept at this point. Vegeta and Trunks, no. Rival UI, no. Uh, the Boo Bros, one of the only 0 for 3 characters they've ever released. Goku and Frieza are power crept. Namek Goku's power crept. Path Park and Goku's power crept. Goku and Bardock are the character that I do want to quickly talk about here because if we scroll down a little bit in this tab, we can take a look at the description here. Not sure why they decided to mention this in uh, this area here instead of making like a separate social media post or whatever about this, but this is a bit strange because they've never ever really done this before? I don't know. As autumn deepens, a super amazing summon is now available in Legends. Yeah, this is not this is not super amazing, but okay. Legends Limited Ultimate Gohan is back for the first time. Yeah, of course he decided to put him on his own banner. Plus, unique equipment for Goku and Bardock. Another returning Legends Limited character is planned for release in November. Don't let this chance pass you by. Get these characters and aim to limit break. Uh, you should not, you should not get these characters and aim to limit break. You, you, sh you should, you should let this chance pass you by. You should not summon on this. Uh, but this is the interesting part about this. I mean, they just straight up tell us that Goku and Bardock are going to be getting a unique equipment next month, uh, which is pretty surprising. Again, I don't believe they ever really announce ahead of time, you know, characters that are getting unique equipment, especially a full month in advance. I mean, technically November is eight days from when I'm, recording this video so it's possible it's not that long along from now but november you know I, I would assume leading into legends fest typically the first three weeks of november are kind of quiet as the game prepares for the big celebration same thing with the anniversary typically may because the, the anniversary is uh, the end of may typically like the first three weeks of may are very quiet and um everything gets crazy as the celebrations begin for the anniversary and legends fest so it's possible they could be giving us the unique equipment for Goku and Bardock sort of like in the first two or three weeks of, of November to, to sort of prepare for uh, Legends Festival to 
depending on what the theme is going to be. I'm going to do a separate video talking about what I think Legends Fest could be. It is very tough to really say at this point. We've covered most of the bases that um, you know the, the, the series has for us in terms of characters and, and super hype moments. Um, they introduced the Synchro Gauge mechanic during the 6th anniversary. I think it's very possible that they could revisit that for Legends Fest. We'll see. I'll give my thoughts about that in a separate video. But Goku and Bardock getting unique equipment is pretty exciting because, number one, they're not that old. And number two, I feel like they're actually not that bad still. Like, right now, you could use Goku and Bardock, and they could help in certain areas, right? I, I mean, they're, what, 11 months old? So they're going to be get because they came out in December last year. They were, they were part two of Legends Fest 2023. They're going to be receiving their unique equipment when they're 11 months old. To me, I think this is what they should be doing for unique equipment. If we go ahead and open up the list of items over here, let me just see. So recently we've been getting, you know, more unique equipment for characters that uh, I think probably deserve them. The Gamma one, I think, was really good. And one of the reasons why I think the Gamma one was pretty pretty uh, valuable and pretty well done is because the gammas are not that old the gammas came out during the fifth anniversary so i mean this equipment came out for a character that at the time of release is what 15 months old which is not that bad uh we got one for <laughs> blue goku and vegeta which did not pan out can anybody guess why because they're ancient that's why uh, we got one for vegeta and trunks i i think the one for vegeta and trunks probably just wasn't good enough straight up but uh, i mean at this point vegeta and trunks are also fairly old we got one for blue vegeto blue who is ridiculously old we got one for U purple ui goku who is also ancient that didn't really pan out too well uh the blue namek goku one i think they just kind of didn't do it justice like this is probably around I don't know, is this is this is like around the same amount of time that it's going to be for uh, Goku and Bardock to come out? We'll see. Um, I think they probably just undertuned this a bit too much. Um, but if we scroll all the way back to some of the original unique equipments, so I have three pulled up here. I have the original Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta one. I have the LF Super Saiyan 4 Goku the Dragon Fist Super Saiyan 4 Goku one. And then I have the LF Perfect Cell, the Purple Perfect Cell equipment. These were kind of like the three first ever unique equipments for LF characters that were specific to like a certain uh, ID tags, like DBL 3501S. We have 3401S and then we have 4002S here. Um, the reason why I think these were super effective for these characters is because these came out not super long after the original releases of the characters. You guys remember when Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta got this equipment, he was like the first one to really start the trend of this. Um, Gogeta was really only a few months old. I mean, I think it was like four months after his initial release that he got this equipment. And I mean, that not only was sort of recognition from the development team that they sort of, you know, messed up with how good they made Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, but because he was so recent, um, you know, he didn't really need like a ton of things. Like you can see this 35% damage was a lot back in the day for an equipment. Uh, a lot of stats on here. We had the HP buff. And of course the anti-revive mechanic was really powerful because of Revival Gohan's presence during the meta when this uh, first released. So I think this was really, really well done equipped. But again, uh, a common thing that we'll see as we talk about this, talk about this one and the cell one is these really didn't come out like a long time after the initial release of the character, as opposed to something as opposed to something like uh, like this, where Blue Vegito Blue is a second anniversary character getting a unique equipment like the, during the sixth anniversary meta. Like, <laughs> makes no sense. Why would they even try this? Um, so I think the odds of Goku and Bardock getting a very effective unique equipment are actually pretty high. Um, and just like scrolling through a lot of what they're able to do here, the fact that they're a tag character, the fact that they have multiple uh, different typings, right? Of course, they're a blue and green character. They have card draw speed. They have easy access to cover all most of the time. They have an AOE green card. They have the indestructible mechanic. Like a lot of these things that this character is doing is like they're, they're going to age pretty well. Multiple typings, indestructible, card draw speed, cover null, AOE green. Like those abilities are never going to get like quote unquote power crept. Like I don't think Indestructible is going to get power crept unless they straight up introduce a mechanic that is going to be able to nullify that. 
Uh, AoE green cards aren't really ever going to be power crept unless they expand on the AoE green card immunity mechanic. They've started to give some characters. I don't know. Honestly, I think they should give more characters that. And I don't know why it's only limited to once only for most characters. But uh, AoE green cards are always going to be really, really strong. Of course, card draw speed and cover and all. The, the, the necessity of card draw speed and cover and all is basically like if you don't have those mechanics, you cannot be used, essentially. Um, so, of course, those are going to be good. So they already cover a lot of the bases that we would expect from like a well-designed unique equipment so i think honestly looking at what they could do here i'm almost just thinking to myself like what if they just gave them stats like they don't they don't need to give them some super like secret abilities like we pulled the gamma equipment for example we scroll down here like they have these paragraphs here like oh they get uh covered all when they use a card below a certain amount of key like these are basically adding on to existing unique abilities for characters I don't even know if Goku and Bardock needs something like that as opposed to just, you know, more damage inflicted. Maybe they, uh, something that I think could be really good for this character actually is, let me pull up just the overall character list here. Something they've been doing for a lot of characters recently. Um, Turles has it, Gotenks, I believe. Let me pull up Turles because I know for sure he has this. Um, something they've been doing for a lot of characters recently is not only do they have 70% reduced damage received, which Goku and Bardock actually do have, they're modern enough to have 70%, um, but now they're also giving an additional 10% uh, reduced damage received buff, uh, buff, uh, uh, you know, in, in relation to certain damage types. So for impact, explode, and pierce damage, Turles takes 10% less of that damage. Um, a lot of modern characters, a lot of modern summonable characters are getting this. Um, now, they don't need to give Goku and Bardock all three of these. They can just do impact damage. I think impact damage is by far the most important because I don't know the exact number, but I think it's it's got to be at least 80% of all the damage in the game is impact damage because most of the time, Strike and Blast Arts cards are impact, right? Um, strike, impact, Blast, impact. So um, impact is far and away the most important one of these. I would not be opposed to them just giving like a slot three buff on their unique equipment where it's like they just take 10% less damage from impact damage. That I think would really help this character a lot. Uh, maybe they give them some sort of disrupt on cover change, but like they don't need to be given these super long paragraphs of abilities. Um, back, in the day, back in the day, they didn't really even need to do that. I think maybe also giving them something like this where they get some of their unique gauge built up at the beginning of the fight could be interesting. One issue I've always had with Goku and Bardock, and this is not really an issue with the character that's like detrimental to them or anything like that. I just never really saw the, the, the point of their unique gauge. It, it almost felt to me that when this character dropped, like you never really considered like, okay, I really need to build up this character's unique gauge. And then their their performance is just drastically going to in, like improve or something like that. The unique gauge on this character was always just sort of an afterthought. You never actively, you know, oh, you were never actively piloting this character to like fill the unique gauge up. And that was your goal. Whereas with most other characters, it kind of does feel like the unique gauge is a central part of how you use the characters. Whereas with this character, again, it was more of just, uh, they felt that since every premium release was getting in a unique gauge, they sort of felt like they needed to just give this character a unique gauge for almost no reason. Like let's let's go down. I think there's a there, sh there should be a description of what the unique gauge does here. Let's see. Slightly charges on unique gauge every time this character uses their switch ability. Applies the following effects to self once unique gauge is full. Like the damage buff is obviously nice, but it's not like a gigantic buff. Um, nullifying destroy card effects, reduce key effects, and reduce dragon ball effects. Like that's for 20 counts only. Like that's, I don't know if this is insane. I mean, it's, it's good. This would be much more important if it was the beginning of the fight. Like imagine if you had these effects up at the beginning of the fight, just having your your whole hand be protected, you can't get your key reduced, and you cannot have your Dragon Balls destroyed. This is a major thing right now. I think Dragon Ball protection is one of the most powerful effects you can have in the game right now. The, the combination of Turles and Tree of Might Goku, one of the most oppressive things that they do, and I don't really see many people talking about this, is how many Dragon Balls they're destroying, both from an offensive standpoint and defensive standpoint, right? Turles is comboing you. Turles just has a 10% chance to destroy a Dragon Ball every time he touches you. And to me, I don't know, it feels like he gets that off fairly often because it's for both strikes and blast cards. And then Tree of Might Goku is going to be destroying up to three of your Dragon Balls whenever his gauge fills up. So 
Um, if, you if you have an effect like this, which I think is one of the reasons why fusing Super Vegito is actually pretty still good right now is because he has this essentially, the, the Dragon Ball protection ability, you're able to bypass a lot of those Dragon Ball destruction um, instances and get your rush out and just you know, start beating the opponent down. Um, this is really the only thing that's super like in insane for me. I mean, it's, it's not even it's not even that insane, right? It's just thirty percent damage. But this is, not that, this is the only thing that I think on this list that feels super impactful later in the game because it's definitely going to take a while for you to get the uh, the unique gauge built up. But I never really felt that this character's unique gauge was, you know, as necessary as like almost every other unique gauge that exists in the game. So they maybe could do something else with that. Maybe it's like when they fill their unique gauge up then they get something else on top of that maybe they gain a dragon ball or something i don't know but uh they could definitely um i think improve the value of the unique gauge in this character as well but uh just wanted to let you guys know that that was something that was in the pipeline i don't think many people are probably reading through the news especially for a banner like this because it's not again i i don't i don't like the fact that they do this ultimate gohan for the first time they bring him back on some like you know bad formatted banner I, I i'm not a huge fan of this they should just run them back on the gotenks banner um but yeah goku and bardock are scheduled to get a unique equipment in november uh potentially could have some implications for the lineup for legends fest potentially it means that you know we finally get a second game originals character even though it's been a full year almost since we got the first one which was goku and bardock i don't know why it takes them a full year to do the game original stuff but let me know what you guys think of Goku and Bardock getting unique equipment. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.